Hey folks, so this <laughs> mess here I have is a uh, Sinclair uh, Spectrum 2 Plus and uh, this was given to me by uh, by my friend Fearcraft and uh, uh, essentially it wasn't uh, powering on um, at all, there was nothing coming on at all. So um, I open here the, um, the uh, power supply outlet and uh, essentially I just traced from there from the uh, power supply to the board here uh, to find out uh, what was wrong with it and I was not getting continu continuity so uh, I disconnected the, the plug the, the wire and uh, I wasn't actually getting continuity through the wire and just found out there was a, a loose cable here so I just made a makeshift uh, uh, a cable. I just literally took it apart, took the plug apart, and uh, resoldered the uh, the wires here. So this is uh, now working for test purposes. I'll get a proper plug um, uh, very soon. And uh, but there was another problem. I was testing continuity over the uh, the power uh, uh, the power socket here outlet, and uh, um, essentially <laughs> the bottom had broken. Uh, so I was getting partial continuity, literally had to push on it, um, which, uh, so I wasn't getting anything and it's only when I started pushing on it a bit, I was getting continuity, so I realized uh, it must be something dodgy, and it was on the other side, so uh, these two were visible, but this one is actually, sorry, these two here, the one here and the side one were visible, I could access them from both sides, but the middle one here is actually under the, the, um, the socket and it comes out from here and anyway it broke off uh, uh, well it was broken off and sometimes making contact when you pressed on it so I'm I've taken this out uh, I'm just gonna clean things here a bit and we'll uh, I, I'm gonna order a new one I don't think I have any of these on hand and I'll order um, the male socket here for this um, and hopefully they should power our, uh, our Sinclair Spectrum 2 Plus. Um, anyway, let's do that. I'm gonna order a few bits. Okay, so I got my uh, new uh, power socket uh, that will go right here. I'm gonna solder that. I got a, a just new uh, plug and the cable that I'm just gonna uh, put here instead of this. Uh, it'll probably be safer. Um, got my soldering iron uh, running and I got a whiskey which is never a good idea um, so let's uh, let's just I've cleaned this area here you can see actually some black still it's probably from a, a previous solder job um, the board is quite clean so I don't need to clean it any further and uh, so let's let's do this um, actually maybe you'd like to know what's what's here this is you know, this is a, a Z80 based computer, the, uh, the Spectrum. Actually, you know what? I'll do a separate video on this. Maybe I'll do a teardown video um, explaining what all these chips are. Um, essentially, what, what you have here is your Z80 CPU. Um, uh, you have your ROM here. Uh, there's another ROM here, you have your RAM here, and then these are control chips. But uh, maybe, and this sound chip, but I'll do a separate video, maybe uh, a bit sexier than this. Um, okay, let's uh, let's get let's get to it. Let's replace the uh, power socket. Actually, there's one thing people say they'd like to see me do is uh, solder these. So I might just do that with you here because uh, yeah, I rarely do that. I need something maybe to keep this in place. Um, like this guy here, it's, uh, it's all set up with clamps and uh, let's see if that works or that helps me anyway. Probably not, I don't think the clamp is big enough. Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's see. Actually, no, that's just too high. It's okay. There's another way to do this easily. I'm actually going to load my iron yeah, it's hot. with a tiny bit of. There you go. So it's it's sitting there on the uh, 
the iron. Let's try not to drop it on the board. And there you go. It's a little bit deposited. Um, and it should be in place. So this will take quite a bit of a solder. Probably what happened actually. I think this was replaced already. I wonder. Now, my friend doesn't do repairs, or I don't think he did repairs on his machine, but he said a friend of his tried to have a go. So that was back then, though, you know, they were much younger, so I'm not sure he exactly did the right job on it. And he probably melted the uh, the bottom of the other. There you go. Right, so I got everything sort of precariously plugged back. Uh, I got a. I'm using my old MSX RGB cable, which I'm not sure if that's right. But I guess we'll see. Uh, I actually don't know what type of cable. I assume it's RGB, but you never know. You never know. There could be you know small differences, especially in the sink. So we'll see. And uh, I just wanted to power on at this stage. Uh, so I think that's all. Uh, the reset button here. Can I actually? Yeah, that's just a push button. Okay, and I have it plugged on this monitor up there because. The bottom one seems to be uh, causing me grief. Anyway, let's plug it everything. Let's plug everything and see if that works. Oh, the light is coming on here. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay, so there's a few issues here, but that could very well be my uh, LCD screen, although it's not here. Hmm, interesting. Could well be the cable as well. I'm gonna need to order a better cable, but this seems to be working. Uh, I got the keyboard plugged back in so I can. Yeah. Uh, 128 basic tape loader calculator. Let's see what the. <laughs> Yeah, there's some graphical glitches, but the uh, numbers seems to be working. I think we have a sync problem, or grounding problem, or anything. So I'm gonna need a better cable than this, or one that's dedicated to uh, the Sinclair. But that's essentially our Sinclair Spectrum uh, fix and sorted. So, um, should I continue with this video, or should I leave it at that? Actually, that's a good question, because essentially, what I set out to do, which is to get it to work, is now uh, working. Although, I'm actually... It says 9 volt DC here. I think we're getting 12 or 13 inside. I'll have to check the specs, but that, that is the uh, the power the power um, module. You know what? I'm actually going to change this guy here as well during this video. So we'll do that, leave it at that, and then we'll worry. Uh, maybe in another episode uh, about this uh, RGB uh, signal. It seems to be uh, not too bad, but slightly corrupted anyway. So folks, a quick update on this. I uh, sort of rigged myself a quick uh, RGB cable. And uh, uh, most people actually use as uh, video uh, for this. And uh, that comes at a price, essentially you have to swap all these um, transistors for instance uh, this one uh, TR4 and I think TR5 and typically TR9 are uh, actually put the wrong way uh, out of the straight out of the factory the, the screen printed the uh, you see the the white uh, sign there that sort of tells you which orientation the uh, transistor is supposed to go in and they actually printed it the wrong way so when they came in to assemble the, uh, all the components, they assembled them the way the, <laughs> the, the silk screen um, on the PCB was telling them to. And um, 
resulting in things that aren't quite working as they should. So at the time, most people were using the RF, RF modulator. Um, very few people were using as video and few or SCART yet. So that wasn't a problem. It's, it was only a problem when S, uh, sorry, um, C, uh, was it a C, uh, CVBS uh, came out uh, component. Uh, sorry, com uh, com uh, composite, and uh, people realized that their their video was actually quite bad. But here, uh, straight out of SCART, you can see that it's uh, it's nice and crisp. Actually, it's crisper. Whoa, come on! There you go. Uh, I'm gonna turn this way down. I think we're good here. Um, so there you go, uh, the machine is working and uh, well at least it's booting and we got a good image on screen. Um, now there's one thing I've noticed that the tape layer, which um, I haven't included here, uh, this is, yeah, um, which I haven't included here, is actually not working uh, when I go to the tape loader and uh, start the tape, um, nothing happens. Uh, that's okay though, I mean it's, I can live with that for that I'm gonna try and fix it so that will be probably the uh, the next video and then um, what we're gonna do is I'm also gonna uh, probably fix some of these chips although if it's working for me there's no reason to uh, the RAMs I thought the RAMs were bad looking at the previous display but uh, it was actually just the, the cable that was causing all this uh, problems which is fair enough I mean this was an MSX cable I just assumed that the pinout was the same but it's not um, and uh, so if, is it worth changing all these do you know what i'll probably bulletproof this guy so we might do that anyway um so i have uh, done my little mods for the um the uh, transistors so uh, tr4 and tr5 here and tr8 sorry tr9 TR8 um, were uh, just in the in incorrectly positioned, so um, I, I swapped them. Um, now that doesn't quite affect our our display because we're actually displaying in RGB. Um, this cable I've just rigged up um, doesn't actually do a video, so uh, I won't be able to check that. But um, well, actually I will because I've actually ordered the proper cable. Um, I thought I could make one, but um, I can't seem to be, be able to get S video properly. Uh, and I'm just fiddling with the cables, and what I've done isn't exactly tidy. So I've ordered just a good quality one. Uh, that includes the sound as well, and that way I'll just be done with it. Um, but uh, it also uh, can do, it's a full SCART uh, cable, so it can do S video as well. So hopefully I'll be able to check that. But to be honest, it doesn't actually matter that much. Um, uh, because I'm just using RGB. Now I'm I'm still facing issues with this tape player. Uh, I'm kind of at a loss as to what's wrong with it. I'm actually getting signal on the heads, um, and I'm getting signal at the pins as well. In fact, I'm getting signals on the ULA. So I'm not sure exactly, and I don't have an oscilloscope to test. Um, to test the, uh, the signal uh, input or amplitude so I, I don't actually know what to do next uh, I don't have any fail, fail components on the way there's actually there's not that many if I look at the, uh, the blueprints um, that I have here so this is coming uh, no, sorry if I look at this uh, pin 2 and 4 uh, these are going to the ULA, um, which is this big guy, uh, and I'm getting. Huh. Actually, I just uh, yeah, there you go. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't have any broken traces on those two lines. Uh, all those components register properly, um, and it's actually going to uh, the audio input here as well. Uh, absolutely fine so I'm sort of at a loss as to uh, what's happening and uh, because I don't have any sound here 
uh, to test whether my sound is working at all. Uh, it could be a cap issue or whatever. Um, I won't be able to diagnose that really until I get the cable. So um, let's wait for that, I suppose. And uh, see you next. But ultimately, I mean, I'm not too bothered. It would be nice to fix it. Uh, I've actually cleaned it. Um, I've put some of the mechanics back. Uh, some of them are um, slightly, slightly hard and rigid, and some of the, um, the switches weren't making contacts properly at the back. So I've cleaned that. So everything is working here mechanically. Uh, it seems to be working here as well. Um, unless this is actually gone just bad. This is the uh, operation amp. Um, maybe, maybe, man, I don't really have anything to diagnose with that either. Uh, I'm more used to digital circuits, so... Um, hmm. Maybe if I got another one of these and replaced it? These, I don't think these fail very often, it's very unlikely. Uh, I can't see any of the caps being bad, although this one has a slight bulge, maybe. Or maybe am I wishing it has? It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, this one... See, this should be nice, like that. And this one probably has a wee bit of a bulge, but I don't think it's anything that jumps at me. Um, unless I'm not loading properly, but I mean, as far as I know, you just go to tape loader, or you can load from basic loads uh, and uh, two double quotes. Um, so I don't know. I actually don't know now at this stage. Um, I'm going to wait for the cable to write um, and see if I get any sound actually out of the test mode. Uh, maybe there would be an indication that I have a problem on the uh, uh, sound circuit. Another thing I've done that's not uh, strictly necessary, but I've socketed this chip here. Um, this is the uh, the uh, uh, 4061, um, and the reason is that this actually uh, um, an issue with this board uh, with the uh, Spectrum 2 Plus. Uh, essentially, is a, it's called a snow effect, and uh, it can be shown as little um, kind of bars or little streaks of white uh, on the screen in, in certain conditions. And some games actually, uh, some can, games can cause that, and it can also crash the system. Um, you can reboot, obviously. But um, so to prevent that, there's a, a guys, a few guys that have uh, actually programmed a, a prom more or less called the uh, Umbrella uh, Chip. That would actually um, just fix that. So I socketed this guy. I've actually ordered the chip, uh, chip, and uh, so I replace the chip when it arrives. Uh, I replace this uh, this one with the chip. Uh, so there you go. Um, other than that, I think I think I'm not gonna get too worried about this uh, not working because essentially I want to get a, a um, SD drive, if you will, a flash card a type of drive. So if this doesn't really work, I'm not too worried. I do have a few, uh, a few uh, Spectrum games. Actually, they are here. I have a few here. Actually, I have quite a few that my friend gave me with this. And um, thank you, Faker, again for this. Um, but ultimately, uh, it's cool to have them. Uh, but I'd rather have them loaded quickly and easily uh, from a flash drive. So we'll go that road. And I'm not going to worry really about this. Um, I'll continue doing some research uh, on it, but if I can't get it fixed, that's not a big deal. So um, maybe I'll do a video specifically on this at some point, but I think uh, I think I'm going to put this together and uh, wait for this chip and uh, wait for the uh, SD drive to arrive, and then maybe we can finish this video uh, with that. Anyway, uh, let's put this back together. And there you go. Uh, all uh, working now, well, except for the <laughs> tape recorder, but like I said, I'm not too worried about that uh, at this point. Um, but the keyboard is all working, and uh, the reset button is working. Um, we have to print. And there you go. Basic is loaded, sorry. <laughs> So uh, that's that's another machine rescued from the dead. If you have actually machines that aren't working, and uh, not that I can fix them for you, but you just want to send them or put them in the bin, uh, let me know. I, you know, I'll, I'll pay postage or something like that, or 
or whatever if I have any interest in them and then uh, I can do a video try and fix them anyway guys thanks for watching I'm really happy with this uh, with this guy being fixed now um, there wasn't actually a lot to it it was actually more the uh, the power connector that had a problem and then I just uh, took the time to do a few uh, um, a few change well adjustments to it so all the transistors uh, I socketed an IC that uh, I would replace in time I actually thought the RAMs were bad uh, but they turned out to be fine and I also reflowed the solder on the uh, on the tape board I just thought uh, it could be the reason why it wasn't working but it's not quite that so there's something else there um, and then I also um, just check out actually a couple of the uh, other connections that uh, are known to, uh, to 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 you know turn bad on this machine, but uh, everything else checked fine. So um, it was quite an easy fix, but um, uh, it takes a bit of time to bulletproof these guys or future-proof these guys. So uh, I, I still have a few things to do, so I'll, I'll document these as well. But uh, for now, uh, this guy is working uh, as, far as, as far as we are concerned. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.